Well, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Polari. I hope you had a great weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so, so sorry, Fasi. That's my friend, uh, Chief Dr. Fasi Yusuf. Uh, he's on the program this morning, and indeed we shall be um, uh, chatting together, as always, uh, on one topical issue or the other. But at the moment, we also have something of a bonus, because last week, well, about a fortnight ago, uh, the president approved the appointments of uh, more aides, uh, you know, senior special assistants and special advisors, uh, you know, they include, um, we got Dr. Dikwe Olu, uh, Miriam Oweis, Senator Babafemi Ojuju, Dr. Jumoke Oduole, Ahmad Zakari, Olufela Bankolemo, Louis Odion, and um, Mr. Aguri Ingelale, who is the um, Senior Special Assistant for Public Affairs uh, in the Presidency. All of the people that I've mentioned are to continue to work out of the Vice President's office. Um, and we have Mr. Angulale, Mr. Mr. Angelale, Mr. Angelale, we have him on air. There you are. Good morning. I can see you in Lagos. How are you? Good morning, Yori. I'm doing fantastic. And good morning, Nigerians. Indeed. Uh, so first of all, congratulations on, um, you know, you know, the, the situation. Um, good to have you. As Thank a you very much. Senior, spe senior Special Assistant for Public Affairs. Well, the first thing I thought we might ask is that one of the most pressing concerns has to be the, the uh, unemployment issue, um, the whole matter of job sure. creation. Um, in this term, I, do you have any, uh, any information on what we can look forward to towards bettering the situation? Oh, with, without a doubt. You know, this has been an issue that has been uh, really at the top uh, of uh, the president's priority list as it relates to diversifying the nation's economy. Uh, we know that much work in the first term of the administration had to do with how we're going to diversify our mono economy, which has been obviously reliant on oil and gas revenues, into agriculture, into mining, into services, into construction, into manufacturing, into uh, some of these other critical sectors that are more labor intensive. But in terms of specifics, uh, it's really important that if any administration makes promises, that it's making promises based on benchmarks of what it has already achieved so that Nigerians know that we're not being insincere in what we're saying. Um, as we look forward to the next level in the area of job creation, there are a few initiatives that I think are really important to be mentioned. Uh, first of all, uh, we know that Nigerian uh, small and medium scale enterprise owners have had tremendous difficulty accessing capital uh, in, uh, within our uh, current uh, banking system. You have very high interest rates. Uh, even within the CBN for a long time, we've been in the double digits interest rates to access uh, needed capital. So what uh, the, the President Mohamedou Buhari's administration has done is essentially to say, we are going to expand what we've already accomplished in the first administration with trader money, market money, and farmer money, which is currently reaching 1.7 million Nigerians with interest-free loan uh, capital. Uh, we're going to enhance that into what is going to be called the People Money Bank. The People Money Bank is essentially uh, stipulates that as long as you're a Nigerian citizen, you are going to have access of loans of up to the ceiling being 1 million Naira. That is going to be eligible, uh, 10 million Nigerians are going to be eligible to access those loans in the People Money Bank uh, within the second term administration. Uh, those citizens will be KK operators, taxi operators, hairdressers, car mechanics, you name it, across, across small business sectors, even media, creative, uh, uh, small businesses and medium scale businesses. They're going to be able to access these interest-free loans. And the idea is that if we can put this kind of capital into the hands of 10 million Nigerians, we're also going to be able to create the potential to expand these businesses, create more jobs for our teeming youths, and essentially expand the economy that way. That's on the one end. On the other end, we're looking at a, a, a program we're calling Skill Up Nigeria which is essentially going to be a partnership between the federal government and several uh, well-known private sector operators at a large level, people like Dan Gote and other companies, major companies across sectors, that are going to bring on Nigerians in a kind of a, 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 kind of a, a protege role. 
uh, using a voucher system where they'll receive a stipend to learn skills from companies that are operating at global standards so that once they're done with the skill up process, they can now access phase two of some of the uh, loan regimes that we're gonna put in place, interest-free loans in, in, in uh, things like the People Money Bank, uh, for example. Mm. Those are two really uh, key pillars in terms of SMS, uh, SMES development. Uh, but some of the other things are how do we attract, how do we ensure that we create jobs right now? Well, one of the key areas where Mr. President took us out of recession over the last four years was the unprecedented capital expenditure on infrastructure development. We were putting boys on the, on, uh, we were putting young men, young Nigerians on roadways and bridges and railways across the country. That is going to be escalated. We are going to enhance uh, the, the expenditures, capital expenditures, cash releases uh, for infrastructure spending. And we're quite optimistic that as we do that, uh, we're going we're gonna to take this unemployment problem head on. Okay. Well, Mr. Galali, it, it certainly does look good, but as you know, um, we, we, we've had challenges, you know, according to commentators with our institutions. It's one thing, because it's really cheering news, a million naira, you said, uh, and you actually have targeted about 10 million Nigerians to take advantage of this. Uh, how do we be, how can we be sure it will get to the last mile? That's the problem we've had. There have been laudable programs in the past, but the implementation has sometimes fallen short. How are we going to guide, guard against that particular aspect? It's a, it's a very important question, uh, Yuri, and I thank you for asking it. Uh, really, what you're looking at here is not just uh, some sort of scheme that's set up where the government uh, brings some politician to head it and, you know, they just kind of uh, approve a huge budget and then money is just given out to whoever will sign up. Uh, when we say one million Naira uh, interest-free loans to 10 million Nigerians, it's not that, it, that's the ceiling. I want, I, everyone needs to understand that that's the ceiling. That the, is not the, the upper beginning. end. Just like trader money, you okay. recall that it starts with 10,000 Naira loan, then that's paid back, then it escalates to 20, then that's paid back, and then they're able to go up to 50 and then 100,000. It's gonna work the same way. Okay. There's gonna be a criteria in place. We have to be able to audit and ensure that indeed you're running a legitimate small or medium scale operation. How many people are you employing? And on the basis of those factual realities, we can then say you're eligible for this level of interest-free loan. And then once you're able to show that you've escalated your business, you've increased your clientele base, you've increased those you're employing, then we can now escalate you to the next level within the People Money Bank setup. But to your point, which is about accountability, we work with multilateral agencies. In, in, in extending these programs to the Nigerian people. These are not just direct programs. We're working with people like the World Bank. We have multi, uh, multiple revenue uh, streams coming from some of these agencies that ensure that indeed there are multiple checks on how these monies are being paid out and that certain conditions are being met. And certainly, if anybody takes out a loan and they don't bring it back, there is going to be a process by which they will not be allowed to take any further loans, not just from that scheme, but from any other scheme of the federal government moving forward. Okay, I, I don't want to go into the minutiae, but it's uh, such a such uh, it's such a sexy idea, a sexy notion um, that this assist will come um, from uh, the government. Uh, I imagine you say you're targeting 10 million. Uh, I imagine there are going to be many more than that that would wish to be part of the system. How's it going to work? How, 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 because you know the usual thing about, well, do you have somebody in the presidency? Do you know somebody? You know, people are used to going about it that way. Uh, is this going to be different? Well, Yori, if you talk to the 1.7 million Nigerians who are currently uh, involved or are participants in the trader money, farmer, mar uh, farmer money, market money schemes, they would tell you that they did not have some cousin somewhere who's in the presidency or some brother who works in some ministry. They will tell you that they had no access to any government connections whatsoever, but that they went through a legitimate process and were selected based on the conditions that had been set. Uh, so I think if, if you're talking about looking forward, I think you just have to look backward and ask the questions of those who have been beneficiaries. And you'll know that ordinary Nigerians have been touched, regardless of religious or political or ethnic uh, associations or affiliations. Now, you've raised a very important issue, which is this. You said 10 million certainly isn't going to bridge the entire gap of what we have in terms of unemployed. That is a fact. 
which is why that's not all we're doing. I'm, I'm just talking right now about SMES development. What other, uh, areas where we're, other areas where we're touching is we're looking at mechanizing agriculture. Right now, we have been able to get tens of millions of farmers back into the farms. We've seen our food imports uh, reduce by $21 billion over the last four years. We've seen rice uh, imports reduce by 97%, fish imports reduce by 99%, uh, sugar by about 62%. And, uh, and wheat by about 60%. This is not a coincidence. This is because of the, the, uh, 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 the, 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 the policies of this administration that have been put in place to put people to work. And now by mechanizing it, last year, uh, President Muhammadu Buhari was in the White House with President Donald Trump. And during that visit, there was an agreement struck between the Nigerian government and John Deere, which is a global agriculture equipment manufacturer. The outcome of that for Nigerians is that we're getting ready within these four years to set up 780 processing output centers all across this nation, including six main manufacturing hubs for agricultural uh, equipment uh, uh, production. That is, our projection is very clear that that is going to create 5 million jobs that are sustainable on its own. If you go into cotton, textiles, and garments, the president has already uh, released a directive uh, through the Bureau of Public Procurement that essentially mandates all ministries, departments, and agencies in the country to ensure that we stop importing uniforms, garments across our entire public sector. Okay, that that is going to sorry, so, sorry, sorry to interrupt CTG you, Mr. Galali. Mr. Galali, Mr. Galali, sorry, sorry to interrupt there, but um, sure. I, I think we're going to have to get you into our studio in Lagos. I mean, you, it's, it's just the same there. Uh, you're sounding great from over there, but um, we'll probably be able to talk a bit more in depth. But quick one, let me go squeeze in a quick one. Uh, uh, Ruga, the controversial Ruga, apparently has, not apparently, has taken off in Zamfara State. What's the state on the whole Ruga matter? As you know, many people are calling for its, uh, uh, the suspension of the idea, uh, but then the news has just come out right. that Zamfara has just launched and has said that indeed government and local government um, areas will be financing it. You got any comments on that? Oh, absolutely I do. Uh, first of all, it's pertinent to note that President Muhammadu Buhari has been very unequivocal in his position that Ruga has been suspended and remains so. Uh, what we have seen is this kind of um, uh, misunderstanding within the Nigerian public space between the so-called Ruga program that was envisaged separately under the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development that, was, that has since been suspended and the National Livestock Transformation Program, NLTP, that was uh, composed and, and produced within, under the aegis of the National Economic Council chaired by the Vice President and brought by recommendations of a committee underneath the, the neck that was chaired by a uh, PDP governor, uh, Mr. Dave Umahi, the governor of Ibonyi State, that essentially calls for a revolution in how we manage our livestock. Instead of having uh, herdsmen, moving around the country across these routes, how do we ensure that we stop some of the violence between the farmers and the herdsmen by stabilizing the herdsmen in an environment where you have educational facilities for their kids uh, to achieve social upward mobility, where you'll now have processing and value additive industries along the dairy and meat and uh, uh, crops uh, uh, value chains. These are the things we're looking at. In fact, the NLTP as currently envisaged is projecting to create 1.5 million jobs. And we have the buy-in from even PDP governors. The Southeast Governors Forum recently came out, essentially putting, a, uh, putting their approval stamp on the NLTP arrangement. So Ruga remains suspended, even though some, some individuals are still using the term Ruga. NLTP is in play. It is backed by the federal government, and it is backed by state governors across party lines. And we're expecting major job creation and major impact in terms of stopping the bloodshed between farmers and herdsmen across the nation. Mr. Juri Ingelaile, uh, Senior Special Assistant for Public Affairs in the Office of the Vice President, thank you very much for joining our program this morning. Thank you, Yuri. I'm humbled. God okay. bless you. All right, then. So um, we'll, we'll just take a quick break. We'll be right back.
Okay, so welcome back, and um, now we're, we're, we're back on home base uh, <laughs> with Fasi Yusuf and our friend in Abuja, Ajuri Ngilale, uh, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Public Affairs, newly appointed. Um, you know, we should be hearing a lot more from him, indeed from them, about what's going on. But one of the things that's really suddenly hit the airwaves uh, is this whole um, uh, very, inter very curiously named company, P and ID processes, I believe, and uh, uh, P and ID. They are the guys that sued successfully and have been awarded 9.6 billion naira. Um, people are saying that that's that's crazy. We had the Minister of Information in here, and he said that's a crazy figure. As far as he was concerned, it was like some folks seem to be maliciously inclined and. Um, this was no more than trying to inflict economic injury. He did, however, say that we should be, you know, assured that Nigeria will not be losing out in a monumental way. Now, I want to ask you, and first of all, Chief uh, Bayojo, um, who was um, also part of the um, arbitration team as appointed, has opined since then that, as far as he is concerned, at the very best, maybe worst for us, but best for them, um, $250 million was all that they, inquired, they required. But this is all based on law. How, 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 what, what is your impression about all of this? Well, I think the first thing, the verdict I will return is uh, docility on the part of the government. And in law, we will say that uh, equity does not aid the indolent. And if you sleep on your right, so many people will trample on it. So, to me, as a former government, uh, I mean, public uh, officer, government is a continuum. Well, I agreed it was Don Yaradwa. I'm here to see the details of the, of the uh, agreement. Mm -hmm. I'm here to see the, the arbitration clause or clauses. Mm -hmm. I'm here to see the timeline what actually transpired. But from what we've been told, uh, from what you have seen, it appears to me that uh, some of us have been clever with our truth, misinformation, disinformation, and uh, mind management, manipulation, depending on uh, which side you belong. If it was discovered that this thing was done when late Yaradwa was in coma, then the government that took over from him what did the government do? Did the government take any step to review that contract or to invoke the application clause? I don't know whether the application was to take place in England, I mean in London, uh, International Chamber of uh, Commerce, or in Lagos, or wherever. But all that should have been done. But again, when the current administration came in first time, there must have been a lot of papers on these things. And there has been a lot of correspondence between the solicitors to uh, P, P and, and uh, ID, ID. ID and the federal government. So what actually happened? And in any case, I do not know how they arrived at that figure. Perhaps out of interest, mm. of course. Well, part of it is interest uh, accruing. Yes. And we also it. know that uh, the government said it went to a court in USA. And the USA court throughout the, the request of uh, P and ID. But again, why were we not to, why were we not carry that along? You see, government is supposed to be accountable to the people. And again, the Nigerian press is also docile in this respect. You see, the question says, the Nigerian media is our government accountable to the people. This is a, a very humongous amount, 9.6 billion. If you take that out of, you're taking about one third out of our treasury. Yeah. Our, our foreign reserves. Not even in Naira. We're talking no, about foreign reserves. Yes. They scarce. say it's about 20% of our foreign reserves. Yes. So if you now do that, then what becomes of the popularized country? Then put that down. So the point that is, if they were to actually be able to execute. The point, the point I'm making is this government should put on its thinking cap and do the needful. You see, no amount of media, uh, propaganda, uh, media relations, media 
connections and all that, we will solve the problem. So the problem is not between uh, uh, the Nigerian media and the populace. It's between the federal government, everybody, including you and I, and that company based in uh, the Virgin Island or wherever. Yes. And uh, the court in the uh, UK. So if they need to appeal, they should appeal, put on all the assignments they have, both uh, Nigerian lawyers who can practice in the uh, in the UK and the foreign lawyers, maybe Queen's uh, Council and what have you, to really solve these issues. And again, let us have a commission of inquiry into the whole saga so that we know it's true. The net being bodied about and all the rest, tomorrow we we'll now see, they come out again to say, no, it was not so. And for how long are we going to live with that? So we must be, as a nation, be, be serious and be strategic in our, in our approach to uh, public issues, public affairs. Well, we, we, we've heard. From, from government itself, and I think EFCC, that no stone will be left unturned in finding all those that were involved said, with in, this. In law, no matter how good your case is, once you sleep on your right, you can hardly get justice. And you see, justice delayed is justice denied. Okay. So, but, you're what, talking about, the, what, what you're talking about the period of over, over 10 years now. What you're, what you're saying here speaks, Why the to, speaks to some allegations that have been made in certain quarters about, um, uh, sh shall I say... Some what people is, being involved? No, 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 no. The, the, the fact that, uh, well, you, you talked about indolence. Uh, people just, uh, governments sort of not being on its game, uh, in, in quite, fr quite frankly, being slack to have let this drag on as long as this. Of course, that was refuted by the minister when we had him here, that um, on the contrary, you know, government has known about this now and um, is doing all that it can. But it's, it's as you say. But the point is, at what stage was the $9.6 billion that, uh, damages awarded against Nigeria? Mm -hmm. Who represented Nigeria? Mm -hmm. And why are we just knowing? Why are we just knowing? And I said, delay delays equity. Delay delays equity. So there's no amount of propaganda that will resolve this riddle. Whether some people are involved or not, the point is that you have 9.6 billion billion debts. Yeah. And again, if you are not careful... A court, a court judgment. Uh, yes. If you are not careful, if, you have, if it is enforced, at the end of the day, mm. they garnish our, our external reserve. Maybe. Well, they, they can't do that, can they? It's possible. Surely, maybe, maybe I was thinking... It all depends. Maybe, 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 maybe what could be done is that maybe a Nigerian ship or a Nigerian plane or, you know, or, but you know our foreign thing? reserves. Why not? If you have money somewhere and you are, you are, you are owing me and I get a court judgment, I will tell the court to go around. I mean, the court will give me the opportunity to go around all the banks and see where, wherever you have the money and I'll get my money from there. But I expect this case to go on for a long while because even in Nigeria, when we have local disagreements here, yeah, as you know, you don't need me to tell you. Some like of them last course, 20 years. At, at some all, of them last 25 course. years. Don't forget that. Look, it's only in this country that lawyers are paid peanuts. When you talk about international arbitration, international cases and other, then the lawyers there, they know that a lot of money is involved and they will charge accordingly. So at the end of the day, you may be, we, we may be paying up to 500 million or even $1 billion to lawyers to handle this case. Which we, can, which we cannot afford and um, uh, so I suppose what Nigeria is left with is um, having to rely on what we are told that um, as they are battling their, you know, everything, everything to I only pray rectify this Lord, situation. I only pray that we put on, I mean, we will put on, uh, our very best, all our legal arsenals. What was that arsenal doing at that time no, when, we, when no, we got I, into I, this I, mess? I, I, maybe because uh, uh, yes. <laughs> you're a friend of uh, lawyers. <laughs> uh, when we talk about uh, justice, we talk about, we talk about equity, mm -hmm. we talk about delay. I said, it, I said delay delays equity, equity and that justice will not be available to the indolent. Uh, Mr. George Inekeja, good morning. Good morning, Uncle Yari, and good morning to Dr. Sassi Yusuf. Indeed, thank you. Uncle Yari, uh, I'm happy to see the appointment of uh, a public affairs speaker for this president. Uh, I would like, and I, I want to believe he's still watching the program. Please, we want a situation where uh, the public affairs speaker for the president speaks on issues at the right time. No, when something happens, people will have been allowed to fester with their formation of opinion or after weeks or months have passed before the government responds. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, 
opinions have been formed and become indelible in the minds of people. He should respond to things as they happen in the country. I wish him well. I know a little about his background, and I know he can do the job. Uncle, yes. coming to the subject of the day, if a minister is appointed, like the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, in my view, the first thing they should do is to look at all the uh, commitments of the government that appointed him. In this case, the Attorney General is supposed to look at all the international agreements that are pending and what the government is committed to upon assumption of office. Is it when something has happened years after he has been in office, mm -hmm. he will now come and be telling us that he did not know about it? Mm -hmm. His mm -hmm. primary assignment is to first for familiarize himself with everything that his ministry is committed to at the time of his assumption of office. This was how it happened that we, we, we were forced to see the part of Nigeria to Cameroon, which is Bakasi. At the time the litigation was going on, our attorney general and the responsible officers were sleeping. They will not attend a, 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 a court sessions and all that. They will not brief the president on what is supposed to be done. This should end. We want people who are serious about governing this country are right to come to, 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 to office, not people who are just after their pocket. Okay, then. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. George, for calling in. We'll just go on a quick break now. Don't go anywhere, please. We'll be right back. We'll continue taking your calls. Okay, welcome back, and um, we're, we're looking at um, the P and, I, uh, P and I D, the Irish gas firm <laughs> that's hit us for 9.6 billion, and um, we're talking about that, and um, actually, the caller, the last caller, Mr. George, just before we went on break, he, he managed to tie in, you know, both our first guest, uh, Mr. Ajudi Ngilale, uh, who is a new special assistant for public affairs uh, to what we're talking about uh, that is to say public affairs officials spokespeople should speak in a timely manner uh, when these things are not. this is something that you've also echoed since we began this program say so, look so where, what why now in other words it's not the best time for, for us to be carried along um, to talk about that because I, will, I know you I'll, are one. Yes, is why I'll, I was talking I'll, I'll about that. I will tell you uh, professionally that a public affairs official or a PR official must be ahead and abreast of passing events. I must know something about everything in an organization where you work for. Apart from that, you must know something about your internal and external environment. That is the micro and the macro environment. But you see, 
we are boxed to a corner in this country where we are only concerned with the, 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 the benefits of the, the, of the of a particular office, not seeing things as a personality that needs to carve a niche for himself. And that's the problem. Well, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. But again, as you know, having been a public official yourself, not all are like that. But you're saying that this is one of the problems that we have. Yes. There are too many of, of such in our public space. Yes. Um, uh, who do we have on the air? Um, Bobby. Bobby in Jalingo, Taraba State. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning, Uncle Yuri. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Thank you for everything that you guys are doing on TVC. And um, thank you. I think we should learn how to like keep telling ourselves the truth about what is going on in Nigeria, or else we will actually find ourselves in a different kind of problems. I was listening to what Ingilali was actually talking about this present government, because he's into the system now. I, I, I watched him, and I listened to what he was saying when he was working with AIT. Then he left the place and on channel. Now he's presently with the present government, and he's trying to, like, must we keep telling ourselves, as in lies, about what is going on in this country? Is this how we are going to survive? Um, Uncle Ori, yeah, let's Bobby, get this thing guys, uh, uh, I, I didn't understand. Oh. I don't understand. I mean, you know, uh, no lies. How, how can you say lies? He's telling us the official, he was telling us the official perspective, and what we're saying is that we should be getting more of that in a more timely fashion. Uh, but lies, where did that come from? Uncle Ori, I'm not trying to disrespect you or your, your program or your station, but Things are going wrong. Things are going wrong. Let's get this thing in the perspective that people are not getting this thing the right way. Okay. Let the, let's, so, so, so what do you let, think? Let, what, let, what, what do you think we should we should have that we haven't had because of quote unquote deception? What what the what? People in power should get this thing straight and do the right thing, or else we are going into we are doing that. All right. Well, uh, <coughs> thank you very much, Bobby. Your point has been noted. Uh, <laughs> what, what he's saying, and I can surmise, mm -hmm. is, is that when you're outside government, you articulate certain things. In a certain way. Yeah. In a certain way. But when, once you're inside, like Abbasman just said, we have, call, we have called you to shop. <laughs> so once we have called you to shop, don't make noise. Well, so, I, I don't know about... No, I, I said that was what he was trying to say. Oh, 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 okay. I'm not saying our colleague, uh, who just been appointed, uh, no, no, no. saying that. I'm We're not, not saying that of I'm Mr. Not, Mr. I'm, Mr. I'm not, I've not got any evidence to that. No, effect. no. What he's saying... That and, uh, once you're brought in... Yes, yeah, that, that, and that is the fashion in Nigeria. And uh, to some extent, it might be right. And to some extent, it might be wrong. Oh, okay. But the important thing is that let us have focus. Mm -hmm. Let us know what we want out of this country. Okay. Are we in this country... To perpetuate ourselves in office, or perhaps to just let the society know that we are there, okay. or are we there to serve society, mankind, and humanity? Mm -hmm. So that's the question we should answer. All right then, um, Reverend Dominic in uh, Alimosho. Hello, Dominic, my friend. Good morning, Yuri. How are you today? Thank you very Good much. Well. I'm fine, sir. How are you, Doctor Fashion? Thank you, sir. Uh, Yuri, in the light, in the light of everything that happens. Anything that happened to, in the life of a nation, there's a lesson to learn. You are a, one thing we must learn here, that is gospel truth. Like doctor has said, propaganda will not take us out of this challenge. Nigerian government must learn to keep agreement. I say this to say this, Yore. One of my friends died three years ago. What kid that young man from my village? When uh, the governor, uh, uh, Rocha Sokosha, came into Imo State. Every one of us behold his ideas and his visions. So he entered what they call PPP, private partner, you know, development of a state. So he took some, some of my friends to go and construct roads in my village. They borrowed money in the bank, 
They began the construction. About 50%, this man, the next one agreement. You know Nigerian arbitration. They were in court. See, this guy caught hypertension and died. A court accident is infinite. The man has lost money, borrowed him back. And this happened generally. Nigerians don't keep agreement. We must learn how to keep agreement. Whether you like it or not, if he's not taking, we'll pay this bill. For a court in London to agree with the man who came to him, there was fast and figure. I listened to the Minister of Information. I want to disagree with him. He's doing propaganda. What was reality on the ground? Do we have agreement with these people? What was his, the issue? Like George said, I read a document about this matter. That in the days of Jonathan, it was 650 million or 600 and something million. They agreed to pay. And Jonathan said, I will not pay because I'm about to leave office. Let the next government, which is this government now, you know, take care of it. Mm. They slept on it until the, it moved move from other six point something billion to nine point something billion. If we continue, if we get to 30 billion, what kind of a nation is that? <laughs> we must learn to keep agreement. A nation that not keep agreement cannot do economic, you know, progress. We must learn it. Business is based on trust. This is why we have credit cards in America. This is why we have credit cards in London. Credit means that I can say, go on and do this, and I will pay. A nation that is not based on credit, on agreement, on the figures of agreement, will be like Nigeria. We must learn to keep agreement. That's one lesson we must learn. Thank All you. Right. Thank you very much, uh, yeah. Reverend Dominic, for calling in. And, um, yeah, without doubt, what you're saying, you know, uh, but also, something that was brought up by George and has been said by Fasi in studio here is, is that we need to know these things on a timely, in a timely manner, um, carrying us along. Perhaps if that had been the yeah. culture, then matters might not have gotten this far gone. Y I, will, I will come back to the issue of uh, docility. Okay. From what we've been told, there was an agreement to have a structure in Udukwani in a crossover state. And for NMPC to pipe gas to that structure, so that we now have either wet gas or mm. dry gas, whatever. But when it was discovered that there was no structure on ground, and since there was no structure on ground, there was no way they could have laid a pipe, or they would have piped the gas to the place. So what was the government doing at that time? And in any case, what stopped the government of uh, Jonathan and the present government from reviewing the agreement? What was the arbitration clause or clauses in the agreement? And in any case, when now uh, my brother, the learning sick, uh, Bayodo, is saying that the amount should not have been more than 250 million dollars. Uh, uh, 150 or 250 million. Mm. Now, another figure was bandied, 600 million and mm, all the rest. Mm. So when you put, when you juxtapose this, or you put all this together, how do you arrive at 9.6? It means some elements within government must have been very docile and must have been very, very intellectually bankrupt okay. and lazy okay. to have allowed this to degenerate to this level. Look, the minister... And some else you have ruled. I think the Minister of Information went as far as saying that he had his doubts as to whether there was even any intention to execute this contract is material? at all. My, my, my brother, is my, is my colleague, is also a lawyer. Mm -hmm. He's also a public relations uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, person, yes. a like Mohammed. But the point is, it's immaterial. An agreement already on ground. The best you could have done would have been to call for a review of that agreement. And when this matter went to court, we should have presented all the facts. Okay. Why uh, we did not play our own part? We did not play our own part because the structure that was to take the gas was not there. It simply wasn't there. Not a, th not a thing. Not, not at this stage. I mean, was, not even that. It's not for them was to even be telling us. They should tell the court, not we. Okay. Um, Maxwell, thank you very much for holding on. Maxwell in Festa, good morning. Good morning, Uncle Yuri. Good morning, sir. Good morning to your guest over there. Yes. Uh, yeah, you're doing a very good job. Thank you very much. Right, I want to contribute with respect to Ajure Ngalali. Okay, okay. A, a, a very fine gentleman, very good journalist. I must say he's a plus to the Buhari's government and a very, very big loss to the media, I must say. Uh, yeah, I say I say that because he is one very, very analytical journalist. Over the years, I've followed him, especially his time in Channel TV, right? 
very, very good investigative journalist, right, that has articulated things the way they are, put out facts the way they are. But for Ajurin Glali to come on air this morning to say Nigeria actually has improved in rice production and now uh, imports less than 98 percent is actually very, very demeaning. And fish right? production too? Fish fish production too? He, no, I just I just want to anchor on rice. You want production. to anchor on rice, okay? Rice production, yeah. You, I don't know. You will not agree, of course. I, I, I'll understand that, all right? But we oh, all agree. You don't know what I want to agree with. Please, <laughs> please, please speak your mind. <laughs> okay. Maybe okay. because you're from we rice know, producing we, area. We know, <laughs> we know. Even the market woman, all right, in my local market here knows that Nigeria largely depends on imported rice. All right. Except, of course, they're saying smuggle rice is not important. But for them to say, or for somebody like Ajure Ag Lali, right, who I have respect, I see, it's a very, very big loss to the media, I must say. And over the years, it has been coming down. That's why I will re keep respecting people like um, your own Otito Jukolade, right? Because those are journalists that will hang on and say, no, they are not going to any politician's camp, all right, to twist facts. Right, because most of the time, maybe because of the pay they see in the media, also, right, they jump on on the next appointment by any politician to keep on playing the roles these politicians are supposed to play. And I think the, the media should watch it. The media should watch it. It's a big loss, sincerely. Right. That's my point, sir. Thank you very much for calling in, Maxwell, from uh, First Stack. <laughs> let, let me just react to that. Sure. Yeah, uh, there's something wrong in the uh, people being government. You see, if all of us decide not to be in government, there'll be, there be no government. Well, I, and I, 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 so, sorry if I say, yeah. I, I don't want us to major on uh, Mr. Ngelali's no, I'm not talking about decision. I'm not, his, I'm not mentioning his name. Okay. I'm not his name. Okay. But he's talking about people going to public office. Yes. What I'm saying is that it has to do with individuals. Your pedigree, your antecedents, and the, your character. You see, character is everything. The fact that you're in government, does not mean you will change if you have a character made of standard stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. But when you hide like a like a, a chameleon, you cannot change your spot. Mm. Even if you are in the media, you will still be manipulating news. Okay. Okay. I hear you. Um. Uh. uh Ade Bingpe in New York. Good morning. Is it sir or ma'am? It's sir. Okay, good morning, <laughs> sir. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning. And good morning to Dr. Fassi. Okay. Um, the, the problem with Nigeria is that the moment foreigners, com foreign companies cannot trust your government to obey court orders, to, to, to follow agreements, they are not going to come to your country to establish any business. Nigerian governments are very good at not obeying court orders. They are not good at obeying terms of agreement. I once worked with Dr. Babalaki in Nigeria, and that man had an agreement with the government of Nigeria to put up, to, to, to build the, the, the local uh, airport. And you see what the Nigerian government did to him, how they treated him badly. And today, Nigerian government expected that other countries, people, Nigerians abroad and companies abroad will come and put their money in a, in a system that is not working. It's not going to work. So Nigeria well, will have to pay that. Well, Nigeria will have to pay that money. Mr. Or Debbie, the money will keep uh, going Mr. Debbie, up. Pay. A system that is not working is a bit harsh. I mean, you know, we are, nobody is saying it's ideal. Nobody is saying it's perfect. We're not even saying it is near perfect. But Uncle not Yari, working, Uncle Yari, Uncle, not working Uncle Yari, means money bound. Uh, Uncle Yari, let's not continue to deceive ourselves. Maybe the, the, the language I've used is, is a bit harsh, but... We need to move forward. We need to I agree. change our style. Yeah. The style that Nigerian government has adopted and they, they have adopted over the years is not fine. It's okay. not good. People okay. are seeing everything we do. Okay. 
I, I accept that. And that is my contribution, sir. Thank you very much. You have been a very great job. Thank and you very much for you. calling in. Appreciate you. Yeah. And the compliment. Yeah. I think uh, what uh, the guy from uh, New York is trying mm -hmm. to say is that an agreement is an agreement it is. until set aside. Yes. And again, uh, there's always provision or there are provisions for review and review. If you know that an agreement has been badly entered into, mm -hmm. or perhaps you discover that there are some other inferences or some other issues that ought not to have been embedded, or perhaps we were able to discover that some people somewhere were trying to be smart, mm. then you could cover a review, or perhaps in the, in the, in the clause, you will have inserted a clause there saying that we can review or we cannot review, yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. after a while, after six months, after one year or two years, and all this, all these provisions will be embedded unless some people are trying to be smart, Alex. Yes, yes. Otherwise, I think this, this is very simple. You know, Tassi, like a, Tassi, yes. you, you said, among other things, since the beginning of this program, that government is a continuum. Yes. And um, part of th these problems that we are talking about now didn't originate in this administration. No, no. Um, but unfortunately, it is having to bear the weight of it. To so when, 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 when things are being said, like, uh, like our compatriot there in, in, in New York was saying that um, Nigeria is known not to you know, uh, abide by agreements, well, it's because he has seen or heard of instances of that in the past. But it's hardly the situation now, I would wager. Well, I, I hope so. I hope so. I'd like to share your optimism, and I'd like to share in, uh, your, your submission. But the point he's making, or the point we should be making is that, as I said, an agreement is an agreement until it's set aside. And we must learn to respect the law. Mm -hmm. And not only that, mm -hmm. we as a nation, mm -hmm. we must learn to be patriotic. Yes. You see, most of these issues stem from lack of patriotism, greed, and avarice. Some people trying to yeah, yeah, it's uh, fair. cut corners yeah. and uh, encouraging foreign bodies to, yeah. to scoop from us. Mm -hmm. And Which also, is why EFCC is getting in on the act. Yes. You know, because yes. we have to examine this. But I'm this saying thing. that why yeah. should EFCC wait for 10 years? Well, why I, was it not scrutinized? How, how do you know why they was heard it, about why, it? Why, why was it not scrutinized when the right there was there, even if it was not done at that time? When Yaradwa was there, I mean, uh, Yoranta was there for about six years. Mm. Six years. Mm. He was there for Nothing was six done. years. Okay. Let, let, let me bring in Abdul Jalal um, in Yola. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Thank How's work? Thank you very much for coming in. Go Thank ahead, you, please. Um, I want to make a... Good, good morning, sir. How's it work? Good morning. Sir, please a, please go ahead. To the uh, jury statement okay. that you made earlier <laughs> this morning. Uh, the senior special assistant uh, on uh, <laughs> public uh, affairs. He's attracting attention. He seems to be attracting uh, a lot of attention. Uh, okay, go on, go on. Go ahead, please. What do you um, want to say about it? What, what he said was about the 10 million people that they were trying yeah. to put yeah. their policies into about the SME. Mm -hmm. So in my own suggestion, in my own suggestion is that... Please just go ahead. Don't listen to any echo or whatever. Just... Try, okay. try and go, so, just speak. So what, what, what they are doing is really good, but we can just get the whole thing into the end users because it doesn't go to the proper channels. Because let me just put an example like the ESO program that the federal government was trying to do to the masses. You, you end up finding that most of the government officials are the most beneficiaries of this program. So... It doesn't get into the hands of the end users or to the uh, community. Like the traders' money, they are saying, the federal government will just put those things into the hands of the major officials, and most of the masses doesn't benefit. So please, if they are trying to put... Abdul Jalal, you, you remember, since you watched that segment of our program, I post, posed this question to Mr. Ngelele, and um, he had said that... It's not going to be like that. Um, you just 
have to that, take that's it. A pledge. What, what's it. That's a pledge. Okay. You have to take it. because. But what you are saying, I also yeah. put Transparency to in the process. Thank you. Transparency is everything uh, in, in the process. Okay. okay. So I want to thank you very much, uh, Abdul, Mr. Abdul uh, Jalal, for calling in. And um, in fact, you know, in, in, in rounding off now, the whole idea, um, because you, you, you're, you know, um, communications expert, uh, the, the, the notion, you've mentioned it today about, it's not just about information, it's about information at the right time if it's to be of any yeah. use. Now, <laughs> look, look into issues. Yes. Researching to them and predicting their consequences. And sharing the outcome. That. Okay. And advising your, 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 your leader or the president or, or whoever, whoever, whoever you report whoever your to principal is. about the likely outcome of our action and inaction. And at the moment, you think that can be improved upon? It can be improved upon. Okay. Like when when say professional, there are so many of them that are professional mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. that could mm -hmm. do all these things. All these uh, garbage, Shewu, uh, Femi, Adishin, oh, all, all, the whole information uh, uh, dissemination core. Mm -hmm. oh, well, I want to thank you. As <laughs> it's unending. <laughs> it's, it's unending. Un yeah. I want to thank you, Dr. <laughs> Fasi Yusuf, a lawyer and communications expert, as always, getting your valuable uh, insight into uh, aspects of stories that we're covering. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Indeed. So that's our program. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yoi Folani. And thanks to uh, Mr. Juri Ingelale uh, for coming in uh, from our Abuja studios. That's our program. Please join us tomorrow. I'm Yoi Folani. Bye-bye for now.